For the function f of x equals 1 divided by the quantity x plus 4 minus 5, we want to find the domain, range, horizontal asymptote, and vertical asymptote. For this example, we'll be using a transformation or translation of the basic function g of x equals 1 divided by x to help us determine this information. So this video does assume we are familiar with the basic function g of x equals 1 divided by x, which is graphed here. With a domain, or a set of all possible inputs, would be all real numbers except x cannot equal 0, because if x was equal to 0, we'd have division by 0, which is undefined. We also have a vertical asymptote of x equals 0, which is this vertical line here. Notice how the graph approaches this vertical line, but never crosses it. And then the range, or set of all possible outputs, would be our real numbers except y cannot equal 0, because a fraction where the numerator is non-zero will never equal 0. And looking at the graph, notice how we also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. As the graph moves to the left and the right, it approaches the line y equals 0. Now from here, we need to recognize that if g of x equals 1 divided by x, then the given function f of x would be equal to g of the quantity x plus 4 minus 5. So for g of the quantity x plus 4, we substitute or replace x with the quantity x plus 4, and then we have minus 5. From here, if we know about translations, we should recognize that g of the quantity x plus 4 would be g of x shifted left 4 units. And the minus 5 would shift g of x down 5 units. Let's review horizontal and vertical shifts using an animation. So in blue we have the graph of the basic function g of x equals 1 divided by x, and the asymptotes are graphed in red. So looking on the left now, notice if a equals 0 and b equals 0, we would just have the basic function y equals 1 divided by x. Now see how the value of a affects the graph. If a is positive, notice how the graph is shifted left a units, and so is the vertical asymptote. If a is negative, the graph is shifted right a units, and so is the vertical asymptote. So this might be the opposite direction that we were thinking, because again, if a is negative, the graph is shifted right. If a is positive, the graph is shifted left. Now let's see how b affects the graph. If b is positive, the graph is shifted up b units, and so is the horizontal asymptote. And if b is negative, the graph is shifted down b units, and so is the horizontal asymptote. So by recognizing this, we should be able to determine all the information that we need about the given function f of x. If we know f of x is g of x shifted left four units and down five units, let's shift the vertical asymptote of g of x left four units, which would be here. The equation of the vertical asymptote is now x equals negative four. And then because of the minus five here, we'll now shift the horizontal asymptote down five units, which would be one, two, three, four, five, which would be here. So the new horizontal asymptote or the horizontal asymptote for f of x would be y equals negative 5. Let's go ahead and record this information. We now know the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 4, and the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 5. Before we determine the domain and range, let's go ahead and graph our function f of x. For example, we take this point here and shift it left 4 units and down 5 units. It would be here. And then from here, this piece of the graph would approach the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Something like this. And then if we take this point on g of x, to find the corresponding point on f of x, we can shift this point left 4 units and down 5 units, which would be here. And again, this piece of the graph would approach the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So by knowing our transformations, we can easily determine the graph of f of x. Now let's also determine the domain and range. 
the set of inputs or x values would be all the numbers except where we have this break in the graph of x equals negative 4. So the domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 4. Notice how if x was negative 4, we'd have division by 0, which is undefined. And then finally, the range or set of all possible outputs or y values would be all real numbers except where we have this break in the graph at y equals negative 5. So the range is all real numbers except y cannot equal negative 5. I hope you found this helpful.